My name is Dan Wallace. You've never heard of me. Uh, I sometimes refer on the internet as Our Hat Dan. And we're starting a new uh, video blogging uh, channel uh, where I'm going to be talking about different technologies that I'm involved with or people, um, you know, interviewing some other people. I'm trying to keep it very short and very, uh, you know, five, ten minutes. Um, and just covering different technologies that uh, I think are interesting. Um, so I'll give you a little history if you never heard of me. Uh, my, uh, I graduated in 1982 from college. Uh, interesting thing there is, you know, um, my first programming course was What for Fortran, and I actually worked on um, punch cards. So I've been in the industry for a long time. Um, one of the first jobs I had out of college was a uh, digital equipment corporation. Uh, while working for digital equipment, I worked on a project called Decathena. Uh, which was a productization of a project called MIT Athena. Um, so I started working uh, MIT Athena, you might have heard of before. Um, projects that came out of there were Kerberos and X Windows, uh, were the two major ones. Um, so I started working in very early in my career on different security products um, and projects. And I continued with digital equipment for many, many years and eventually joined the Alta Vista team. And for those uh, youngins that are Googling what Alta Vista is, uh, it, was all, it was Google before Google. Uh, so Alta Vista was a, one of the first search engines of the internet, um, but it also did other internet project, products underneath it, including firewalls and tunnels, and those are the paths that I worked on. Um, uh, so we worked on very early VPNs um, and firewall rules um, for the internet. When I eventually left digital equipment, I joined a company called HackerShield. And in HackerShield, we were using tools, uh, hacker tools, to attack uh, your, your own network to figure out if there's any vulnerabilities in your network. That company got bought out by a company called Bindview. Worked there for a couple of years, still working on tools to uh, reveal vulnerabilities in, inside of your uh, uh, network. Um, and then I joined Red Hat. Um, so pretty much up to the time I joined Red Hat in 2001, I'd worked on security products, uh, security tools. Uh, after joining Red Hat, um, in the very early years of Red Hat, um, I was working on different tools and National Security Agency came to Red Hat and uh, asked us to help them um, productize and get into the upstream kernel SE Linux. Um, so when people at Red Hat looked around for who had security expertise, they found me and put me in charge of SE Linux. So for the next 10 or so years, I worked on uh, uh, security enhanced Linux or SE, SE Linux and um, sometimes known as Mr. SE Linux in the, in the world. And there's actually a website that you go to called uh, StopDisablingSELinux.com and it mentions that I cry when people disable it. So um, that's been around for many years. A uh, little... Uh, during my time working on SE Linux in around um, 2005, I actually, uh, we added a thing called the Mount Namespace to, um, uh, to RHEL, to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And that was the first time namespaces were used in an enterprise Linux and namespaces, if you don't know, were the basis for containers. Um, so with SE Linux, we were controlling processes uh, we started getting into containers very uh, container technologies very early in in, um, in that early 2000s. Um, I actually introduced a product project called SE Linux Sandbox, which was a tool for launching um, user space, launching user applications in your home directory um, with a different mount uh, namespace and SE Linux wrappering. It really was a container, but I, we called it a sandbox at the time. Um, this is a few years before um, Docker came out with their, um, you know, they really made containers popular. Um, during the same time frame, we were looking at how we could use SE Linux to control uh, multiple VMs running on a system. So we introduced the concept of secure virtualization, otherwise known as SVIRT. And we've been using that ever since for controlling how you know, multiple VMs could run on the system. Um, about 2009 time frame, um, we started a project called OpenShift at Red Hat. And one of the goals of OpenShift was to allow people to have, this was OpenShift V1, was to allow them, uh, users to have multiple, or basically to have a, 
um, a machine or uh, accounts on the internet where anybody that gave us an email address would be able to get onto a machine and start building uh, tools that would work on Realm, building applications that would work on Realm. And we heavily used uh, SE Linux in the beginning to separate all these users and make sure the users didn't, you know, basically cause, you know, hack each other and attack each other. Um, so I was very early in that technology to work on that. And that's really was some of the basis for the security that was built into early versions of OpenShift. Um, a couple of years later, I was working on a tool called, um, uh, it was called Vert Sandbox. And what we're really trying to do is take that early SE Linux sandbox technology and apply it to services. So um, services, and we were doing that for OpenShift 2.0. Um, but uh, at that point, basically in around 2012 timeframe, um, OpenShift management came to me and said, what are you going to do about this project called Docker? And I had never heard of Docker at that point, and we quickly had a pivot and switch uh, over to supporting Docker instead of the, the tools tooling we were working on. Um, and in 2013, when RHEL 7 was released, uh, we had major announcements that we were now supporting um, Docker, and eventually Docker was supported underneath the new version of OpenShift. Um, so I worked for the next few years working on container technologies um, and um, working with the Docker project, upstream Docker project. I was able to get uh, SE Linux uh, merged into Docker and really started to be able to control the way containers ran on the system. A couple of years after that, uh, we started to have some issues with Docker and them trying to, um, what I thought was closed source, some of the technologies are trying to um, uh, do things that we weren't didn't agree with. And so we looked into creating our own container tools at that point. And so we introduced the concept of uh, Cryo, which was a uh, container runtime for Kubernetes. And eventually we came out with uh, Podman Builder and Scopio. And for basically the next seven, six, seven years, I let, ran the container team, um, you know, chief architect of container technologies at Red Hat. Um, and I, you know, obviously I still work on um, Podman and Builder and different tooling in that, in that frame. Uh, about a year, Go, I started working on the Ribos project, Red Hat in Vehicle Operating System, which was really looking at how we would build an operating system for uh, vehicles and mainly looking at how we could use containers inside of a car. So I uh, worked on that till just about last October, and then we started a project inside of Red Hat to uh, allow us to do uh, create operating system based on container technologies. Um, so, um, and that's called, you might have heard of Image Mode for RHEL, which was just released at the Red Hat Summit uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so it's really, you know, blending all the technologies together, um, you know, and, and containers and isolation of processes and controlling what's going on in the system. Um, recently, the, the, that technology has been expanded into the world of AI, so artificial intelligence. So now I'm working on... Um, REL AI, so the way we're going to do AI inside of containers. Um, the bottom line is, you know, SE Linux technology has gone through this entire um, suite, containers technologies, um, some of the more modern AI technologies, and, um, and basically that's my career path at Red Hat. Um, one of the things I would like to get out of this um, video blog ser series is uh, get some of the lesser known technologies out and basically talk to different industry um, experts or different people inside of Red Hat uh, who work on these technologies and really describe very quickly what those are. Um, so we plan on dropping this on a weekly basis. Um, uh, every Wednesday is the goal to drop it. Um, we'll be working, um, uh, hopefully there'll be other people I'll be interviewing and I'll be giving out some of my ideas. Um, and hopefully we'll get generate an audience for it. So thanks for listening. And uh, I think as they say on blogs, make sure you click the uh, like button and subscribe.